De dag, hè. dat is een beetje nodig. Ja. Ik ga even een nummertje doen uh, van uh, mijn, mijn tweede solo plaat, Color Journey. Even een nummertje warm spelen, dat heet Abstract Impact. Ik ga even de sound check.
maatregelen even bedienen, want ik heb de bende voet. Ik heb normaal gewoon een voetbetaaltje bij, maar die heb ik op een of andere manier niet in mijn tas zitten, dus geen idee. Ik heb nog steeds koude handen, dus ik probeer een beetje warm te worden. Ja, <laughs> het is hier niet echt dat hij zegt, echt lekker warm, dus... Maar mijn nek die is wel warm, dus dat uh, helpt misschien. Het uh, sounded hard, zo. Het huh? sounded hard, zo. So. <laughs> ja. Yeah. Uh, I shall do the, it in English, maybe that's better, because not everybody here is Dutch, right? Ja. Yeah. So, Yeah, let's let's do it in English. Huh? So my name is Marcel Kulun. So thank you all for joining this uh, clinic. And uh, yeah, clinic, I mean workshop, whatever. I mean, f they used to say clinic, but it sounds like a hospital. So that's why I use the word sometimes and not. Uh, so in this workshop, um, I mean, I'm playing the chord guitars. This is an X500 Menace that I'm playing at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show a little bit of what the thing can do and how it sounds. So I'm playing through uh, a Fractal Audio uh, FM3 at the, at the ground here and uh, uh, next to a pedal board next to it to, to switch the sounds. And that's uh, just all modeling at the moment. It's, uh, it's easy, convenient, and it uh, doesn't require a lot of carrying with amps and stuff like that. So that's uh, why I like it. Um, switch sounds. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start off. Uh, yeah, it just was really uh, a warm up, so there were some little mis minor mistakes also in, so whatever. I'm gonna start now. So, um, this is, uh, I'm gonna play a song which displays a little bit of technique that I use a lot. Uh, uh, incorporate some sweep picking techniques, some tapping techniques, some alternate picking runs, and stuff like that. That's what I'm specialized in, and people ask me all the time uh, how to do that, so I'll explain a little bit after after I did this and then you can uh, judge. So I'm gonna play a song that's called uh, Race Against Time. I have to switch to a different bank. Let's see. B2 and then, yeah, song two. Thank you. 
normally on the ground that's easier because you can hold it better. <laughs> So that was Race Against Time, a really old song already from uh, the first Guitar Talk album. And uh, well, during the Corona times, I had nothing on, nothing to do anymore. So I thought, let's re-record that damn thing, because I was never too happy with the sound of the first version. So and that was because back then, you know, I had a drum computer, I had a four-track cassette that I recorded everything on. And I mean, nowadays the technology is much better, so I did. I did everything on my own, so all recorded at home, I have my own studio uh, at the moment. And uh, the result is there, that CD. And that's the new version of Guitar Talk. It has, uh, instead of 12 songs, it has 17 songs. So it has also some extra songs, some really much older songs still, than were on Guitar Talk. So, I mean, I did in 2014, I think it was, I did a little album called Disambiguation, that's only online uh, available. And uh, there were some demo versions of demo versions of these songs were already on there, and uh, I'm gonna do one of those. And uh, this one, let's see. Uh, yeah. This one features on vocals Pascal Raymond, that's a singer that I worked with also in some tribute bands that I had and stuff. Really great singer, good friend of mine. And so you will hear some vocals, it's not me, so <laughs> I, I can't sing that good. So uh, this is called Human Experiments, and this song I wrote really in 1989, so it's really an old, an old classic. Here it comes. Thank you. 
my influences were when I was young, right? <laughs> Lots of Iron Maiden, Halloween, that kind of stuff was inspiring me back then when I was, yeah, I was, uh, let's see, 89, 17 years old, so 16, 17 years old, and I was heavily into that kind of music. And it was even before I went to do thrash metal, because I, I went into Spirica and Form after that, so, uh, and uh, after that began, began my prop metal uh, career where, where, where people maybe, maybe know me from, from Suncase or, or Lima Voice and of course also playing nowadays with Arian, so that's what I, what I do at the moment. But uh, yeah, this was really old, uh, so, uh, and uh, I, have, uh, I have five of these really old songs standing also on that uh, guitar talk version that were not on the original, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's bonus and also with a good sound like, like this. And as I said, this vocals was uh, Pascal Raymond. He used to sing, uh, yeah, there some Belgian people here in front, uh, Breathless, back in the, in, in the 80s. I'm born in the end of the 80s, so... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but in, in, in the beginning 80s, uh, you had a band Breathless. Okay. And uh, they, uh, they had Pascal Raymond as a singer, yeah, so that was really back, uh, back then. And yeah, I met Pascal uh, years ago, and uh, yeah, I asked him to, uh, to do the vocals on this. And, uh, nice. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? So yeah, of course I have also ballads and stuff like that, so it's not only heavy metal that I'm playing, so uh, I'll do a ballad now, that you can uh, hear a little bit difference. Um, there's a song that has the most views on, uh, on YouTube. So people that follow me there, they, they can see uh, that it goes over the 100,000 views, this one. And this one's called Moira. Oh, <laughs> 
So that was a, a more ballad kind of song that I wrote, I think it was 2002. It was right before the first Guitar Talk was coming out. Of course, yeah, it was also just Don Kavir, the old version, and this was with Hans in Sand, great drummer. He plays currently with Printing Mantis, I don't know if people know this, but uh, that's the drummer that you heard here uh, on, on the track. Richard Rittelbeeks on the bass, one of my biggest friends. And Donnie Kroon, also known from Sun Cage on the keyboards. And then I mixed it all together in my little song studio, so that's the result. Okay, I'll explain a little bit about some things that I'm using. Um, let me first take the delay off, just a normal sound. All right, um, well, some techniques that I often uh, do when people ask me about is sweep picking. Well, what is sweep picking? Sweep picking is that you do it one motion, you strike uh, 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 some strings in a certain rhythm. And that's actually uh, how you should do it. Some people just do this, you know, but that's not what sweep picking is. Sweep picking should be really like, like, you really should hear the notes all separate going. And there's a good technique for that. Uh, it is like a feeling like a slow motion if you write with a bend, a little line, like this. That's also the holding that I, uh, I have to pick like, like this, right? It's uh, just uh, between index finger and, and thumb. And I'm playing always in this direction with a little bit of angle. I kind of like that because of the sound. It gives a little bit more edge. If I play straight, it sounds more like this. You get a little bit more aggression, which I, which I kind of like for heavier riffs. So I always play with a little bit angle. Um, and uh, this, uh, in, in sweet picking, the same thing. So it's like... So arpeggios, uh, these are broken chords. So if you have an A minor chord, uh, everybody knows A minor chord and a chord. You can do this like an octave higher. Yes, and then you just, just take the fingering of the of the bowing chord. And this you So that's basically the arpeggio. Uh, arpeggio means that you play the note separately from this chord. So that's actually what it is. And I'm using, uh, at first, uh, just a pick down with a hammer-on, because I have two notes on that string. I mean, I can't sweep, of course, uh, to, a, to, a, to a different string when I have two notes. So that's, that's so just picking it and a hammer-on. And then the next four notes are a sweep. So this is going go down really in the slow motion. So I really, you really have to, to feel this. So not like this, but really this, that's, that's the key, and this is to get used to. I mean, uh, it, it, it took me quite a while before I felt how to do it, actually, and I started with just two strings, you know, like a, like a little blues technique, like, a, like, like this. And here I do the same thing, so the first two notes is a sweep. So this is a basic exercise that you can start with sweep picking. And then just build it up to speed. So just start really slow, like... This is actually harder to play slow than it is fast. Because fast, you just, just feel the motion. But it is slow, you have to, to feel it um, a little bit drawn back. You know, like uh, the timing is, uh, is like, it feels like slow motion. So that's, uh, that's a thing that you have to remember. And that's, um, that's a big thing about sweep picking. The second thing that's important is the muting of the strings. Because, of course, when you don't mute, you get this. Eh? That sounds ugly. So you have to, uh, what I do is uh, that I put the finger that's after the, the, the note that I play, I put it a bit uh, wide so that, it's re that it touches the string before. So that I, when I release it, Mute it actually, yeah, because if I don't do, I get that. and this I this you want to avoid, and this I do always in a bigger pressure. So if if, if I do uh, like like a C chord, you know, like you can do it also here, huh? just a C chord, huh? 
And here's the same thing. So always. So the fingers are always a bit wider than it touches the string before. And this makes uh, the arpeggio sound clean. So. And then the right hand comes in when you go down for muting the, the strings that you don't play. So basically, when you play it, now you are at the B string. So you, can, you cannot mute the first three strings anymore. So this you do then with the right hand. So that's actually my thinking of muting. So I'm, I mute actually three ways. Is this, is this really like, uh, this is one, so fingers right, this, so left hand, the second is right hand, so muting with, uh, with my palm. And the third is that I'm also using the fingers sometimes for my right hand. If I play, for instance, uh, a long note, like, like a band. Then I use this. So this uh, makes sure that the note can, you, you can really pick put big vibrato on without you hearing all kind of string noise. And this, this is what, what I like to do. So I also use these, these fingers sometimes to uh, around the notes. So and this is also a big part of playing clean. So it's not only uh, just having uh, you know, the, the, good, uh, the good dynamics and stuff like that, of course it's also important uh, to practice with with little gain, you know, and in general to, to, to really create a little bit tension. And uh, I mean, I practice so sometimes for that only with sound like this. Just to hear if every note is like picked the same uh, dynamics. And this, that's my phone, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, but, but this is something that uh, that I really do a lot also, and sometimes also on acoustic, because that's really heavy. That's really hard to play. Eh? Acoustic uh, steel string, and they're doing these chromatic things, like... Uh and then make sure that every note sounds clean, you know, and, and sounds uh, dynamics. And that also translates with distortion. And then it sounds good. So that's an important thing. Um, I'm using actually uh, the FM3 from Fractal, and I used like like a Marshall uh, amp in there, you know, like a Marshall si simulation GVM. I think it is. And that's actually the amp I was using before. I had really this big Marshall head, but uh, yeah, last year I got hospitalized with a heart attack, as some people might know. And uh, I mean, I'm lucky that I survived. So I'm standing here, like huh? uh, 30 kilos also down. So that's only good. But uh, this, this really um, also meant that uh, a lot of my strength, which I used before, uh, was less. So the first gig I had this year, that was I think in, I think it was in March or in April, I'm not sure. I think it was April. So I was just four months uh, out, out of the hospital. So I was really like 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 weak and stuff like that. So, I mean, I mean, I, I started really by working out a little bit to, to get my strength a little bit back. But I mean, I couldn't carry the amp anymore. I couldn't really. That really was heavy. And and before I just you know. So that was also a reason for me to switch to easier solutions. And this is then perfect. This is uh, lightweight. It sounds good. It sounds great. I think. And. I mean, I had a Line 6 a Helix before this, which was good too, but if I can compare the two, I prefer Fractal, because Fractal sounds, to me, uh, I mean, the sound quality is about the same, but the response you have, the latency you have when you play, and this is, um, I mean, when I play to a tube amp, you have a direct, direct uh, coming in, like, that is direct response. And with the, with the Helix, I always felt a little bit of latency that was in there, for some reason. And this, with this, this is such a fast processing that you don't notice it anymore. And this is why I, why I switched, because I'm really a tube guy, normally. I used to, to drag all, always big amps and, and, and uh, cabinets and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, times are changing.
and especially when you when you play live, lots of people don't want to see big amplifiers anymore and stuff like that. And then this is, this is a cool solution. It is just yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pedals that I have here, but uh, this is my my board that goes before. It has it has my wireless, so I'm playing with a wireless line six connection, so I don't I, so I can do this like this. <laughs> which is great and I got dizzy from that so uh, but yeah this is uh, that's a cool thing you can do like uh, like some stage things and there is my tuner there is a little phaser that I like like an Eddie Van Halen kind of phaser so phase 90 which and it has the stripes from Van Halen the uh, the white and red so it looks like uh, like him Has a little bit of that sound, right? A little bit. Uh, it was my own version of a little bit of eruption. This is not it's not how it should be played, but this uh, this I like a lot. The sound. Is that, uh, so so, and I want to use it wherever I, I want. So that's the reason why I have a, lo a little pedal because in in there is actually also the same pedal. It is modeled in there, and it sounds just as good. But then I have to make a preset or I have to attach it to a switch there. Which I can do, but uh, I have all my switches in use at the moment. So all nine switches are used for, for other solutions. I mean, my delay, for instance, I can turn off and on. Long delay, I like that. Chorus. So these are the two effects that I use in here. And I can move to banks. And I have four sounds, and I have my tap tempo which I can uh, set to, to the song tempo and then my delays go in, in timing of the song. So and that's great. If you, if, you have a, if you have a tap tempo, that's awesome. And use a little expression pedal here for the volume. And I shall display a little bit what that does uh, in the next song. Am I in the right bank? Yes, I am. Six. Let me rub the build water getting dry. <clears throat> and this is more my New Age inspired song, because uh, I love also artists like uh, Mike Oldfield, is a big influence also of mine. And the next song displays that a little bit with, with what has my New Age kind of a feeling. This song is called Endless.
Is that explicit by its own? Uh, it's an IR, an impulse response. Uh, the guitar doesn't have. No, piezo? not a piezo. No, this uh, this is made uh, with an uh, impulse response. Right. I don't know if you guys know what impulse responses are. Those are actually uh, captures of uh, of a speaker emulation, or like uh, uh, a big uh, 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 clankast. I don't know how to say that. Uh, how to say that in, <laughs> in English? <laughs> hollow body. Hollow, hollow body. Yeah, exactly. The, the recreation of this hollow body kind of thing. It, it, they make also IRs of that, and IRs is just an impulse response. So 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 they recreate the 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 bouncing back of the sound, or stuff like that, and that recreates the sound. What I'm actually using on all the sounds. Are impulse responses. So these are impulse responses from from cabinets that I also used and also still use. Sometimes with a power amp, I can use also this combination with a power amp and cabinet. So for rehearsals and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that's this is basically also an impulse response that creates this sound. So, so that makes it acoustic sounding. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what creates uh, the sound. Um, the second sound that I use, it, it has a lot of delay. So it goes like a stereo kind of motion. And I use the expression pedal with that. So it's like... Uh, So it only controls the volume. So if I turn off the delay, it is just this. So it's like this. That's how it sounds without a delay. And with delay, it gets really this, this kind of a floating ID, which I like about it. In the tempo of the song, that it creates a little bit of this floating motion from from the left to the right. Especially if you listen with headphones, it sounds really beautiful. It gets really this kind of idea. The second sound is more the lead sound, which has a shorter delay. So it's a bit faster in tempo. And the delay is not as loud as in the first preset. The first preset is like a, really like. A, But the second is not. And then I use one other sound, which is a clean sound, also with a delay. So the normal clean sound is this. Just very basic clean sound. And there's also a delay in timing. Uh, So it, it, it lays uh, uh, the delay notes in between. The tempo is from the delay is this, and the song is like. Uh, so. So it gives that kind of emotion. And this is uh, what I love about you know guitarists like uh, uh, in the past uh, Pink Floyd. Uh, Pink Floyd had a lot of these ideas, uh, so uh, run like hell. Uh. The time was different. It's not this this time, of course, but uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, that really gives that that kind of same effect. So if you set it the, the delay, I think it was 280 something like that millimeters milliseconds, and then you get that that one like hell sound from Pink Floyd. Um, uh, uh, Marillion um, did it also a lot a lot in the past. Hey, Kaylee, it starts with this. Place, what you hear? So the delay is like repeating it once afterwards. So you can all set that in, in digital equipment, like like how you want the length, how you want the, 
And actually, I like to play with delay and also use it in a in a, in a musical manner. So not like just put delay on for 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 a big stereo effect, but really use it like 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 a part of the song. And this was just a good example of that in Endless. I mean, Endless wouldn't sound that great if it had no delay on. So that really makes the sound in the song, I think. And that's that's uh, that's a lot of things that I that I also did in Suncage in the past. I mean, I have like. Um, uh, on the first album, there is this. Uh, there, there are these songs which, which have tick, 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 all, all these kind of effects. With Nemo Voice, I did it also. So it it, it also fits to prog metal a little bit to do that. I mean, currently you have bands like Animals as Leaders and stuff like that, and they are using also kind of effects like that. So so I also hear that back in their music, and that comes really from the 70s from bands like uh, like Pink Floyd. So that's cool. And I mean, I started playing in, I think it was 1983. So yeah, that's, I mean, of course I'm influenced totally by what was what was out there, so in the 70s, and that's, uh, that really uh, formed me as a guitarist. So I'm more of an old school player also. So I'm maybe not that clean as, as, as currently, I mean, when I look at animals as leaders, I, I think like, what the fuck, you know? I mean, this guy is crazy, this uh, Toshina Bashi, I mean, but, I mean, I'm more a player that that likes tone, that likes really like a bluesy edge of the tone. And um, I mean, shredding is cool, but you have to um, um, uh, to make it also sing. I think uh, that's a very important thing. I mean, I, I love players like, you know, Eric Johnson or I saw Joe Satriani, that's, they have a sound that really in incorporates also a lot of tone and character. And that's uh, more, more also my kind of direction that I'm going. So I'm I'm not not much of that uh, modern modern player, but yeah, I mean all all the stuff that that I do comes a little bit from from that era of uh, of really uh, bluesy players actually. So that's where a lot of my technique also comes from. Um, I mean, of course, also prog metal. I mean, back in the day, uh, yes, Rush they influenced me also a lot. I mean, Alex Lifeson with his solos and, and the way of you picking really, really great stuff. So yeah, old school. <laughs> um, I'll do a proggy song. That's also, uh, that's also on my second solo album. I have to go to Pete. Wait a minute, to find first. Yeah. And this is from Color Journey. And I have to get back to the sound. I get much delay when I don't want it. So this is uh, called um, Patron Saint. Thank you. 
so I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I think you're right. It is time I think for the next uh, to build up stuff like that. So I want to thank you everybody for listening and uh, coming. So uh, thank you for that. If you are interested in CDs or DVDs today, ten euros a piece. So you can buy them here uh, for me. And uh, yeah, that's cool. So you guys, uh, thank you for coming, and until uh, the next time. <laughs>